What's up, everybody? This is Phil Rogacki. And I'm Jared Abergina. You're listening to Two Tree Guys Podcast. What's up, everybody? Phil Rogacki here in North Carolina at the TCI Expo. Man, what an awesome event that we've had. This is day three. My mind's foggy. I've been talking all weekend. You can hear it in my voice, uh, but I'm sad to see it go. I'm sad to see uh, the expo ending, but you know what? Uh, I have a special guest. Heck yeah, you do. I have the, the save the best for last. That's what I like to hear. Miss Megan Bonowski. I hit it right? You did. You okay, got it right. the J was silent. The J was silent. I had her test my last name, Rogaki, and she nailed it. And I was like, <laughs> damn, I now I got to try to pronounce hers exactly for that. But welcome. Welcome uh, to the Two Tree Guys podcast. No beer. No beer. Slightly No beer, but we're saving that for when you come out to California. Yeah. We're going to drink and we're going to have a good time and we're going to train and do all that good stuff. Hell yeah. Um, but, you know, in this episode, it's. You know, this is about your story. Mm. It's about the good. It's about the bad. It's about the ugly. It's about the the life. It's about the journey. It's about the path, the obstacles, things you went through, times you wanted to quit, times you kept going, the proud moments of your life. You know, is is and the things that you've shared with the world and the and the people that you've touched over that time. And and uh, this is what's your story. And your story is unique, and the world needs to hear it. And once it goes out there in the world. <laughs> It's out there. You can never you take can, it back. You cannot take this back. <laughs> uh, but 10 years down the road, you don't know who this touches, who listens to it, who you help to get in the industry um, and and motivate to kind of take that next step here. So guys, gals listening to this right now, we got a fee for the show. It's if you like it, if you loved it, if you got something out of it, mm-hmm. share it. OK, share it. Uh, don't keep it to yourself. Don't share it on there. Put it on your Instagram. Help us, you know, grow this and help us share these types of messages out there for that. So, Megan, welcome. Thank you. I'm super stoked to be here. So thanks for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it. And you're 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 a podcast veteran. I mean, you're like on every tree <laughs> podcast ever, right? I don't know about every tree podcast. But that's a life goal of mine, necessarily. That's a life is to goal. get on every <laughs> tree podcast there yeah. is. How many have you been on? Um, I think three. Three? I think this would be my fourth. I think there's only like five. So there's you're almost there. Is there? There's, there's quite a few up and going. Like which which ones? Where right. you so I did TCI a few times. Okay. And I wish day three, my brain is literally mush right now. I cannot recall. You put me on the spot. I cannot recall <laughs> the names of them, but I will look it up and I will find that answer for you. <laughs> okay, good. And I'll shoot it over good. to you. Good. Well, there's, there's cli- I think, Climbing Arborist is one. There's a few out from Oregon. I want to say there's there's uh, 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 VM uh, veg management. Uh, there's a veg one for California where all they talk about is line clearance and that one's good. But yeah. there's only a few and um, some of them, you know, stopped like two years ago. And yeah. I've, I've gone back and listened to them all. There's some good ones out there. There's some real good ones. But this is the one I want to be the on best. because I see it this on TikTok. It. All, all the, time. the time. Just you wait. You guys are just wait. Bro, go to Your California. Is like, oh, that's point. me. That's yeah, me. Every you... morning I wake up. I'm like, oh, I gotta post something, <laughs> you know. But wait till you come out to California. When I say it's gonna be the most epic weekend you ever had, you just gotta tell that's me when you want to nice come out. Days. You just gotta be like, dude, I'm coming out there. Let's do some stuff. We'll put you up. I'm we'll in. have some fun. Come around when we're doing some training. Come hang out with us. Come California. Dude, we'll next go. boot camp. Let's go. Okay, it's gonna come up in January. Yeah, I'm in. The, okay. Maybe. I mean, I, oh, I have some. Oh. I have some commitments in January. Uh, so like, no, give me you the heard dates. it here. You said it. You said it. You <laughs> said it. There's teasers or some other stuff going on that I, that I should be well, part of. Come, come to like a master class. You know, we're gonna have Chisholm there. We're gonna have no. August. Mark, right? She's Mark Chisholm. You ever heard of him? That, Mark maybe Chisholm. it sounds familiar. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. I'm asking Jared. We teach a master class. He's like, everybody's tired of hearing from me. No one wants to hear from me anymore. I'm like, they still want to hear from me, buddy. Yes. They still want to hear. Humble from me. as always. I know, super humble, but. Let's hear your story. I want to hear time you were born to where you are now. What's so the there future hold? There I was, coming out of my mother's. <laughs> yeah. That's world. where it all started. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I had a very non-traditional, non-traditional start in this industry for sure. But before that, 
It was definitely like a thorn in my mother's side, right? Because she was super excited to have her little girl. I was the youngest in my family. Yeah. And she was like putting me in dresses. And I grew up on a street in New Hampshire, which mm-hmm. was very rural. So like if someone drove by, we were like, who's that? I have to know that person. Like, really? Yeah, it was that rural. Um, and she was like super excited to have a little girl and put me in dresses. Well, how many, how many, how many kids did she have before? How many brothers? Two. Sisters? So Two. A sister, late brother. Gotcha. Um, and we were all four years apart. And basically, whenever someone on my father's side of the family got married, my grandmother would subsection a part of her land and give it to them as a wedding present. So I grew up on a street with all my cousins. What? Yeah, right? Very non-traditional, right? So all my cousins and uncles and aunts were all on the same street. Literally, Grandma's house was through the woods. <laughs> really? Yeah, no, it was legitimately through, <laughs> through the woods. Through the back of the woods yeah. or at your grandma's house? I would just like ride my four-wheel over there. It was great. <laughs> so cool. But everyone that was my age was all boys. Yeah. And just, I mean, I don't know, just wired differently in general. Yeah. So, like, my mom would put a dress on me, and I was like, the boys aren't wearing shirts, and I would just rip the dress off and run around naked. Um, and she would just be chasing me, trying to, like, put clothes on me. Yeah. And I was like, no, and the boys aren't wearing shirts. I don't care. What was the, the girl? Was the boy? Were the boys cares? naked, too? They were, they, well, they weren't wearing oh, the shirts. shirts. Yeah. But uh, my mom wanted me in a dress, so, like, like, I would take the dress off and then, like, <laughs> had no pants on, whatever, you know? Uh. Here, here we are. <laughs> Immediately, you guys are like, we can't air this part podcast. No, right we again. air it. We're going to air it. <laughs> yeah, I, you can say anything on this show. Trust me. Can I draw? I'm trying really hard not to swear. Oh, you can say fuck you, Hell whatever. Yes. You can say right. shit. Bam. Yeah. Immediately anything. vamped yeah. for this. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I just grew up hanging with the boys, climbing trees. Like, we came home every night to a cowbell. It was like, it's dinner time. The cowbell bell would be rang, and oh, that was wow. our, I know. I feel like I went back to like Little House on the Prairie or something. Dude. I mean, you guys are running through the woods, yeah. climbing trees, yep. cowbells ringing, dinner time, cousins, Ashlight family. Tag. Yeah. Oh my God. New Hampshire, man. Last frontier. Man, I've never been to New Hampshire. <laughs> no. Never. Really? Never, ever, ever. It's beautiful. Is it? Honestly, like I wouldn't live there again, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's nice to visit. Yeah. Um, the fall, winter time is cool. There's oh, a lot of now, ice. I'm from climb. Ohio, but it's not. I'm so sure. Nowhere. Not, no. Yeah, yeah. Nowhere. Oh. Ohio, Toledo, Toledo, I've, Ohio. I've, Baby I've, Detroit. Dude, I've trained quite a few trainings in Toledo. Really? Yeah. Not where a at? lot to say about it. Where at? Toledo. I mean, like where uh, at Toledo? Like what companies or what? I was training with Husqvarna. Um, oh, okay, yeah, so yeah. So I did some trainings out there for the dealer channel, and then at Ray Tree Service, I was also stationed yeah. at Toledo, at least, like, staying there and then going out That's to so eat. weird here, yeah. people. Yeah, totally, there's not much there. You there's know. not. No. It was just a struggle to find good food. Yeah, yeah, it sucks, man. If I, you can give me some recommendations. I, I brought my wife back, and I was like, oh, yeah, and then I was, like, so excited. I'm like, okay, let's, I'm going to show you this, and I'm going to show you this, and I'm like, okay, let's get dinner. I'm like, I'm not for sure. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we got Applebee's. Damn. No, and I started, God. and it hit me. I'm like, Don't do it. we got chilies. Oh my <laughs> gosh, we got nothing. Do you, do you have an Olive Garden at least? Yes, we have Olive Garden. And now I took her to a couple little like pizza plate, but yeah. it was, it's not like California food no. where everything is like this little boutique, you know, you know, private little chef cooking yeah. you their own little Let style. Tell me about that mac and cheese yeah. with the, with like, we're going to shave with some truffle, truffle oil truffle yeah oil. yeah so okay n- back to new hampshire <laughs> yeah sorry back to new hampshire <laughs> family <laughs> running through the woods naked yeah here we are <laughs> um so those were some of my earliest memories i actually burned a few of my barbie dolls and dresses in our wood stove that we used to heat our house because i was just a rebel and i was like i'm not wearing them do not dress me in a dress anymore me and my brother my brother was such a jerk well, you burned the whole barbie yeah. Or just the dress? No, no, like, we were little hellions. Oh, my god! My brother's like, let's go, Meg. He was just, like, he was there, and he's like, you'd open, we'd open it up, freaking, you know, open up the vents so we didn't smoke out the whole house. Yeah. And we'd, like, start throwing all that stuff <laughs> in the fireplace. My mom was so pissed. <laughs> Burn so plastic. Pissed. Yeah, what could go wrong? Oh, god. That probably explains some things yeah. that, like, later on in life. <laughs> yeah, I, you stood over that stove too long. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, But... So that was kind of like my yeah. lifestyle growing up. And like some of my earliest memories, my dad, you know, we used wood, as I just said, wood stove yeah. to heat our house. So some of my earliest memories were with my dad out in the woods felling trees. And I'm using air quotes at the moment um, because he was just doing like one angled cut. Yeah. And he was like, all right, Meg, here's the deal. 
take a look at the tree, right? Look up. And whenever you see it falling in any direction, run the opposite way. And I was like, sweet. I'm in. I got this. <laughs> you just you just loved it. Yeah. That adrenaline. Like, Let's go. Like, um, the little baby girl, <laughs> half naked in the yeah. woods with her dad <laughs> cutting trees. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so when I got to high school, uh, I was struggling a little bit, yeah. as one does yeah. in high school. And my grades were not the best. So my guidance counselor pulled me in. And she was like, listen, Megan, you're, you know, there's a lot to be desired in your grades. I was like, understood. And she's like, listen, we can continue down this path and yeah. push you towards college because that's what everyone was doing in that generation. At like 2003, they were like, you have to go to you college. You have to go to college. Get $100,000 of debt. This, yeah. is the, this is the only way you're going to succeed. If you, yeah, if you don't go to college, you yeah. won't be successful. What could go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, whole other podcast. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Don't, I'll get on the soapbox and start talking about college. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, you can take prep courses like chemistry and physics yeah. and biology and all of that. Or, or... You can play in the woods with a chainsaw for half the day. And I was like, well, you know what? Math is hard. Give me the chainsaw. <laughs> I have no idea how to use it. I think I saw my dad use it a yeah, few times. Yeah. Let's go. Um, and as it turns out, I was pretty fucking awesome at it. Yeah. So. Oh, I just heard your accent come out. A. So. It turns out. Yeah. So everyone's like, are you from Canada? And I'm like, no. Old. I was like, oh. I'm from New Hampshire. Almost Canada. Almost. Yeah. Almost, almost Canada. So when North I get enough. really amped up. I yeah. have this impossible combination of an accent of Canadian in Boston. Oh, oh yeah. Gosh. So I get this like selfie. So I'm like, listen, pack the car and we're going to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, what just happened? I don't know. And I'm like, here we are. <laughs> they're like, yeah. I don't make happened? sense. I'm just, I'm just existing uh, in this life. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, so I was really fortunate to grow up in an area that had a vocational high school. So it wasn't it wasn't specifically a vocational yeah. high school, but they had a vocational program and it was one of the best in the region. Um, so like they literally had a functioning bank. They had a functioning building trades class where they were building houses for the homeless. They had a functioning um, culinary restaurant that was open to the public as well as a daycare, uh, a florist. So had, salon. Dude. Small engine repair. Seriously, uh, no. There was this, a small I, engine repair. There was also. I, I, I went to a, uh, 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 a vocational school okay. in high school because Hell yeah. I sucked. And Dude, I, high five because here we are. Uh, my junior year, I couldn't play football because my grades were so bad. Okay. And they brought me in just like you and said, listen, dude, we need you on the team next year. Wrestling's <laughs> coming up. You can't miss that. We're going to send you to the school where you don't have to do a lot of math and stuff. Right. But you can do that. And I took cooking there you go for two years so it's awesome yeah i mean we need more of these type of schools we do way more i'm and a huge advocate for the vocational and starting like i think it's bullshit that we're thinking as blue collar jobs are a back like no. the, the fallback for people that just can't make it in corporate america it's bullshit no. this is what built america thank you you know your plumbers your yep. electricians your mechanics you know your woodworkers 100%. And now that's a shortage. It is. You, you can't you can't find these people, and and there's not enough trade school. I mean, they got rid of shop, you know, and, yeah, and school, right? and and home ec and all that stuff. We need that back. We need those vocational schools like that out there because individuals, they're not meant to go more school or go to college or anything like that. They want to do something with hands on. So giving them that type of education uh, is important, and they 100%. can get out at. 20 years old, I mean, right? 18 years old, right out of school and making freaking 50, 60, $80,000 a year. Yeah. Why everybody else is going in debt. I, I literally would not be sitting here in front of you today if it wasn't for that vocational program. Changed the entire course of my life as I know it. Because your guidance counselor brought you in. Yeah, guidance counselor. And then the the biggest mentor I had in my life was the instructor for the forestry pro program. Who is that? Rick Martineau. Okay. Shout out Husqvarna. He's a technical trainer at Husqvarna North America. Okay. Um. And literally, he's my dad. Really? So, yeah, um, my, my biological father passed away about 10 years ago. And um, Rick was family friend at, yeah. after I got into the, the vocational forestry program, fell in love with my entire family. And if I ever get married, that man will walk me down the aisle. He Aww. is 100 percent my yeah that's cool. my everything that's cool that's cool we can cry a little bit. It's Aww. fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's on video, too. So everybody sees it. Um. But yeah, no, it absolutely changed the course of my life. I, I showed up to forestry and immediately bonded with Rick. Yeah. And it was like, I'm gonna, do you want to hear a secret? Yeah, yeah. I love secrets. Yeah, so here we are on National Television. Don't yeah. tell anybody. 
Yes. I was eating lunch in a bathroom stall. That's how lame I was. I was a loser in high school. Um, I was eating lunch in a bathroom <laughs> stall before I joined the forestry program. And I just didn't know where I belonged. And I fell into forestry and fell in love with it. And it finally was being able to engage my mind in a, in a learning platform that made sense to me. And I was like, this is my jam. Hell yeah. That um, is awesome. Right? We had a hundred acre woodlot. We had a freaking old timber drag skitter articulated steering. Yeah. We had we had logging operations. We got introduced to forest management, logging, sawmilling, arboriculture, and it, I did it for three years. And I was like, "This is what I'm doing." And, and at such a young age, you found that. I mean, yeah. think how many people in life are eating lunch in sure. the stall and don't know their place in yeah. school or friends or which group and what to do and you know depression starts kicking in oh, yeah. and you start coming to hermit you don't want to leave you stay in the house and and some people go like that for a long time in their career but they don't they don't know what they want to do they don't find that passion and for you to be able to find that passion at such a young age uh and have had you know you're you're super young right how old do you think i am oh uh, one of those <laughs> questions i would guess you're tell me 26 you're so kind. I can tell you're just 27. To, no, no, really? 34. Oh, shit. Okay. I've been, I've been so you've been doing this a long years. time. 20 years. Everyone looks at me. They start doing math. I'm like, yeah, I've been doing this 20 years. And they're like, how old are you? So so you've gotten since what? You know, 14, uh, uh, 14 to now yeah. being in this and going through this and knowing that this is what I do. This is my purpose. Yeah. This is my why. This is my passion. Yep. That's awesome. I just did a whole talk this morning at 815 on like leadership and how to stand up in front of people. And the whole beginning of that talk was if you're going to lead, you need to know where you're going. You yeah. need to have passion. And there's a Japanese concept called ikigai, which is if you can find that intersection of what you're good at, um, what you love, what you can get paid for, and what the world needs. If you can find that intersection, man, that's the jam. That's passion. That's that's something that sets your heart on fucking fire. <laughs> Look it up, guys. Okay, okay, man. I miss that class. <laughs> I it, I need I need to hear that class. I love that kind of stuff. What good book are you reading right now? Ooh, so. All right. <laughs> oh. Here we You're go. You're like, okay, yeah. you can't say that book on air. Well, no. <laughs> so I I force myself to go. I'm a, I'm a huge nerd, so like I've built computers specifically to play video games, uh, like and not lose any frames per second on ultra high graphics. So I force myself as a computer nerd. Yeah. Um to go between reading a fantasy novel and the next book I read is educational or inspirational in some way. Mm -hmm. yeah, so right fantasy. now, yeah, I'm reading the uh, Court of Thorns. Excuse me. I, I'm totally butchering that. Anyways, it's about fairies. Okay. Yeah. Is it good? Yeah. No, it's it's really good. There's a bunch of dark fairies, good fairies, bad fairies. Yeah, here we are. Uh, is it a series? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a... I'm currently reading the Court of Mist and Fury. So this is like future movies that are coming out. Oh yeah, no, they actually just I think sold to either Netflix or Hulu. Oh. So it's going to be actually put out into the world. You All right, what's your favorite it? movie? That's such a great question. It's between like Boondock Saints, Avatar, and probably um, Boondock Saints. Yeah, right. Yeah. Old okay. School. Yeah, yeah. And probably Braveheart would be okay. the cross section of all. Three. Those are all great. Yeah. Those all are all amazing. great. Good. Good. Okay. Oh, and then when, when you said like fantasy, you like fantasy books, that's why I asked about movies because, you know, yeah. You, yeah so. All right. So back on. Yeah. Right, we're, we're, get, we're, we're, get, we're all off topic, um, but this is good stuff. This yeah. is good stuff. Everybody's driving right now. Like, what, where's this podcast even freaking going here? Just shut up and listen to it, everybody. All right. Like, driving, I thought this was about trees. It. What's going on? I have no idea. We're talking about fairy porn. We don't know. Uh, so getting, getting out of high school, then, then where, where was the path taking you? So. Yeah, um, I decided to go to college. Okay. Because again, you that's got, what I was told I should. Yeah, do. you were brainwashed. Um, and I actually made Rick cry because initially, I was did the whole forestry thing, and I was really good at it. I was actually setting records and winning and competing within the yeah. FFA. Um, but I was really passionate about equine and and horses and stuff like that. I had I paid? I bought my own horse, and I was working at a stable like every weekend. Yeah. And I wanted to get into equine. So I was going to the Thompson School of Applied Science at UNH, and it was for equine management. And I remember I kind of just, I was like, nah, dude, that's not my calling. Like, I love it, but I don't want it to be my career. I don't, yeah. want, I don't see my future in it. I think that was just a safe choice because I loved it. 
And I was like, I can see a future in forestry. So last minute, I just changed my entire curriculum to major in forestry. And I remember bringing my schedule to Rick on graduation day. And I gave it to him like with a, like a note and stuff like that, just talking about how much he meant to me and how he influenced my life. And he read the note and he opened it up, the schedule up and he was really confused. And he started looking at the classes and he just started bawling, like full on ugly crying. Aww. And that was kind of my trajectory there and i started um my associate's degree okay and good. i started my own like tree care company and again i'm using air and you were folk you were u- utilizing college and focusing on you know a specific trade yeah you know, like someone going for nursing or doctor exactly or, you know for that you know for yeah the, uh that's awesome and i thought i wanted to work for the forest service at that point doing like timber cruising and stuff like that um i had no idea i wanted to be a trainer mm-hmm. but I was like, yeah. when did you figure that out? Well, I remember taking my first summer there. I took some summer classes to try to get ahead. And I was like, all right, I took chemistry. And then I was like, I need to figure out something for the second part of the summer class. And I saw rock climbing. And I was like, that sounds badass. I'm good at climbing trees. Like, why not? Yeah. And I took the rock climbing class and I fell in love. I'm like, yes. Yes. So immediately after that course, I went and got a job at a rock climbing gym uh-huh. and started training. And that's kind of was my introduction into training was through that rock climbing gym. You were I, training there? Yeah. The rock, okay. So certifying people, running them through basic like um, belaying. You still rock climb? I do. I'm an avid rock climber. I love it. I've I, never been rock climbing. Well. I would love to go. You, dude, you're on Cali, man. You got... The playground is in your backyard. Oh, All right, man. when I come, we're getting okay. you on a rock. Okay, okay, yeah. good, good. So that was my introduction. I had this guy, Brian Rafferty, was my boss, and one of the best public speakers and influencers I've ever met. This man is just charismatic as all. Where is he at right now? He is still based in Massachusetts. Okay. As far as I know. Yeah. Um, but he was a pivotal and kind of a mentor as far as public speaking and, and starting to train and influence people was my first real introduction to that was him. Hmm. And he sat me down. And he's like, Meg, you're great. You know a lot. You're charismatic. You suck at sitting in front of people right now. So we got to work through that. You're too nervous. and You're too rudimentary and rigid in your delivery. Yeah. And you're just going through a checklist. He's like, people don't. People don't care. They don't respond to that. People remember the first thing and the last thing you said, but they will always rem- remember how you made them feel. Mm-hmm. And I was like, damn, okay. Um, and from since then, I just started relaxing. I was like, you know what? No one knows what I'm going to say. So if I miss some things, who cares? Yeah. Because no one knows they what I'm going to They don't know any difference. Say. Only you do. Yeah. And then I just started rocking it and I had fun with it and I started laughing. And, you know, one of the most influential things for me was being able to to know what I'm good at and know what I'm not is to look at someone and say, you know what? That's a great question. I don't know, but let's figure it out together yeah. or I'll find out from someone smarter than me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that was my introduction into like training. And I was like, you know, I think I might be kind of good at this. And then after that of going, okay, I want to train. I'm, I've got my associate's degree. Mm-hmm. I have some, some training, some skills. Now what? Yeah. So um, I got my associate's degree and I realized that I was not ready to go into the workforce. So I was like, S- I'm going to keep doing school. So I got my bachelor's of science degree oh in forestry gosh. as well. Um, and you went from a girl that in high school, the guidance counselors brought you in and said, hey, maybe school's not for yeah. you to go in and get your associates, your bachelor's and something that you love. Yeah, exactly. It, the, the associate's degree was awesome because it was all really hands on. You had four hour vocational, like out, you're out in the field doing the stuff. And then I got to the bachelor's of science four year and I was like, shit, this is the real stuff that they told me I wasn't good for. And they were right. <laughs> so I, I had to probably one of the most difficult things that I did. But you did it. I did it. I, How'd that feel when you when you completed it? You know, it felt really good felt because good. it was something that was hard. I had to work hard for. And it was a struggle. Like I took time off. Like there was definitely some mental struggles where I had to take time off and just focus on myself. And yeah. I knew that it wasn't for me at that time yeah. and come back to it. But I finally got it done and it felt really good because good. it was, it didn't come easily to me. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. And then I was like, I had my degrees in hand. I was ready to take over the world of like a yeah. uh, 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 forestry and get in the forest service and like the whole uh, housing bubble and the whole crisis that we yeah. had. That was one of the worst ones economically since the Great Depression happened. Yeah. And there was a nationwide hiring freeze with the forest service. And I was like, oh shit, I got six months before my student loans are coming in. <laughs> and I got two degrees and no one will hire me because I don't have any 
job experience and in the forest service isn't hiring at least anywhere locally in yeah. this particular region and i was like all right and someone looked at me and they're like hey you train right and i was like yeah and they're like you're a rock climber and an arborist right and i was like yeah they're like i'm opening a new telecommunications company and i need my, to, someone to train my guys how to work at height on cell phone towers and i was like i can figure that out yeah <laughs> so i went and did like this train the trainer course for rope access <laughs> and got trained to train people on cell phone towers and i was like this is what i do now that's cool um so i started training and working in telecommunications also doing product management construction management yeah and w- just what'd you what'd you learn with that on with training the individuals with no experience or little experience what they have so most of a lot of them came from just like a board culture a lot of them okay. came from like rock climbing or okay. arborist background so they had an understanding some of them some of them had no understanding they were just like this is a job i don't i don't need a certification to do and how long would it take you to get them before they were performing and actually making money for the company? I think in like the rope access telecommunications, not nearly as long as our industry. Yeah. Because there, it's Here we go. A plus B equals C, right? There's, there's not that many variables. You have anchor points that are rated and engineered yeah. and certified for 5,000 pounds or more. The tower is the same. There's three, three to four different types of structures for towers. You have your tie-in points. You have your antennas. Everything's very rudimentary and dialed in mm-hmm. versus in our industry every tree is different as we know yeah um so i would say it, i would have them certified to climb in a week but for them to be proficient and yeah. working on rope maybe a few months and did you learn how to make it more efficient to where how can i shorten the time how yeah. do i how do oh, i absolutely. make that better you know and keep tweaking that out yeah so like when i went and got my certification basically to access most towers whether it was a self-supporter or a monopole they were Y lanyarding in, so you had your double Ys, and you would go up like one, two step, clip your Y lanyard in, unclip your other one. One, two step, clip your ne- your other left hand yeah. Y in, unclip your other one, and that's how you were accessing the tower, which is very cumbersome mm-hmm. and lengthy. Versus if you have one person go up, do that, set your access line on a rope termination plate or something like that. Now. Not only do you have an access line for rescue or things of that nature, but you have everyone else coming up behind you can just put up a rope grab on and tool up to the top and you're ready to jam. Nice. So we we started implementing rope access techniques into telecommunications, which at that time, not a lot of people were doing it. Mm -hmm. Now, were you bringing some new new innovations to that company of how they did it? Yeah. Um, But I was... Like finding better ways to do it. So here's yeah. more efficient. Here's how we're going to do it faster. Here's different products or, you know, tools we're going to use to do this job. I was working with a guy that was a an affluent arborist. So he came on to telecommunications. So he was bringing a lot from that aspect. And he was further along in the innovation of arboriculture than I was. I was still like rocking a bleak yeah. sitch or yeah, freaking yeah. a folian on a carabiner. Right? <laughs> I was like, let's go, man. <laughs> um, and he was like, no, nah, man, hitch climber pulley is where it's at. Um, so he was bringing in quite a bit of knowledge from that realm. I was bringing my rudimentary knowledge from that realm. And then we started getting involved with Sprat. Okay. And Sprat kind of really changed our entire outlook of how we can do tree, um, excuse me, telecommunications in a better way and be more efficient and safer, honestly. Mm-hmm. Because at that time, I don't know that it's, again, I've been out of for a while. But at that time, there was like no real standards for people on towers. There were like... The OSHA standard stated that if it was more efficient for the climber just to walk up the tower with no tie-ins, you could do that legally. And I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Dude, it was... And, like, I would go and train in front of, you know, the old crusty tower dogs. Yeah. And they were just like, well, back in my day, I had a fisk and I didn't have the tie-in at all. When You you know those tree guys do that all the time. I think I heard it three times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh man. So after after that, when did you decide? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on. Yeah. No, I realized ATM table was a devil. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm bad. Then I, honestly, it was kind of a moment where I was talking to AT and T, and at this time I was doing safety, but I was also doing a lot of construction management. So I was dealing with, you know, we were working had AT an AT and T contract, mm-hmm. and then I was working with a lot of contractors in the field. So I was in that in between and. I had a phone conversation with them and they were like, Meg, you said you were going to have six towers live by the end of the week. And I was like, I get that, but we have a blizzard and there's 50 mile an hour winds and I'm not putting my guys on that tower. Like the temps are negative 10. And they're like, we didn't ask for excuses. You said you were going to have six live by the end of the week. So either 
get those live or we're pulling your next 50 sites. And I, and I sat on that phone call and I took a breath and I was like, pull them because I'll get on every contractor's phone right now and you're not going to get those next 50 sites done. I'm, I'm not putting them like guys on the tower. I'm not putting their lives in jeopardy. That's bullshit. So you can back off on this yeah. and we'll get it done by next week when it's safe to do so or yeah. or you're not going to get it done at all. So go ahead, pull them. What'd they say? I mean, they backed down. Yeah. But it was that moment I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, my passion and, and like, for my guys and the safety and doing things right yeah. is just not even being heard. And it not, and I can't, I'm not even making an impact. I'm not even driving change. I'm not moving the needle in the right direction. It's just I'm being completely shut down every day to fight. And I was like, I, I don't So that moment anymore. you were like, that's it. I'm yeah. Out. Yeah. And then what, where'd you go after that? Husqvarna, North America. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So How, how'd you like that job? Dude, it was awesome. Day one, I showed up and they were like, bam, here's a, like, safety orange chaps. Uh-huh. Bam. Here's a safety orange shirt. Here's a safety orange helmet. You are now a traffic cone. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. as soon as you get those dirty, we're going to give you a new pair because God forbid you look like you do work. <laughs> They, they want you to be oh, yeah. super sharp all yeah, the time. Yeah. And I get it, image. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was an awesome opportunity. I worked with them for about three years doing product Good. training. And Good. Where'd you I, travel to? Every day I went to Sweden. I got to do oh, like some. Gosh. Yeah. You got some experience. Oh, yeah. I went to Sweden. Know, all the different companies, yep. different states, seeing the people, seeing the good companies, the bad companies, yeah. you know, understanding. Uh, yeah. And it was a really interesting opportunity as well because I think. In this industry, we get so focused in on the micro of what it, we our touch points that we are directly um, involved with, right? Mm -hmm. And then like, oh man, if only Steel did this, if only Husqvarna did this better, I, oh, I can do this better, I can do this better, because you're, you're very limited to what you're directly involving with. And it opened my mind up to the macro. Yeah. Like there's this one particular story when I was sitting in, in front of a bunch of dealers on the 550 Mark I launch. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of issues with that model. Okay was blowing up there was a lot of ingestion issues and specifically a lot of the ingestion issues were due to the fact that their air filter um, was a hard point connection so it didn't have any like rubber grommet mm -hmm. or anything like that to to make a seal so that was one of the major components and i would stand in front of dealers and they were like well meg this is a super easy fix like all we did was just apply some silicon put the air filter back on boom done bob's your uncle <laughs> <laughs> and they're like I'm not an engineer. I'm just a dumb tree guy, and we figured it out. Why can't Hus Fardner figure it out? Yeah, why? And, dude, you ready? You want to hear it? Yeah. So it's not that they couldn't figure it out, but it was the fact that that fraction of an ounce of weight on the air filter threw off the entire balance of the saw and the gyroscopic forces. So when you're thinking about all the gyroscopic forces of the chain and the flywheel and, you know, the piston and all of that, it wow. threw off the entire balance of the saw that they had to go back to the jar on board and re- design the entire chainsaw from the ground up and spend millions of dollars to launch the 550 Mark II. Wow. So I think that's the perfect example of like a macro idea of like, yeah, no, it sounds like a really easy fix, it's like, but in it's fact- like the, It's like the butterfly effect. Yeah. So they had to redesign, there was other issues with the saw as well, but they redesigned the entire saw and then marched, well, excuse me, launched the Mark II and fixed that issue. Wow. Which, you know, every I, I mean, it's cool to hear that those stories about a manufacturer like that, uh, that to go, yeah, they could maybe made an easy little fix or something. They go, nope, that's yeah. not how the saw is going to run. It's nope. Start from the drawing board yeah. and just scratch it all and right? redo it all just for that. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. So, so you've gotten a lot of experience with with Husqvarna. I met some great people. Absolutely. A lot of people still your friends around. Oh, the, yeah. No, yeah. I was down at their booth for like. They're annoyed with me at this point. I'm like, why am I not on your age team yet? Like, come on, I live in your backyard. I know your product line. I'm easily marketable. What's go? What's the holdup, yeah. Jen Simmons? Let's go. Yeah, who are you talking to? So Jen Simmons, I was chatting with. Uh -huh. um, he's the global um, product manager for the tree, for the professional chainsaw. So basically mm -hmm. any professional chainsaw in the world made by Husqvarna, he, it's his baby. It's his baby. Cool. He's kind, I guess he's kind of important. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But also my dad works there too, so I'm always over there. Oh <laughs> man, cool, cool. So then you left Husqvarna, and where where was your next? So I jumped on board with the Right Tree Service because I really loved the opportunity with Husky. Um, but I I was kind of sick of doing the product training yeah. aspect of it, and yeah. I wanted to be more involved in the safety 
And that was where my real passion was. So I jumped on with Right Tree Service and was a safety supervisor for them for about a year and a half. And just, man, I was drinking from fire hose. Because I bet. It's I, a big company. Yeah. And I was still, again, had a obviously a really knowledgeable background, but I was still kind of stuck in the old ways of things. Yeah. And I got on with the right, and I was just drinking from fire hose of information with some of the best trainers in the country. Uh, and they were just like, let's go, Meg. Here's all the information. And I was like, all right, I'm in. Let's do it. Oh, man. You just <laughs> absorb, absorb, yeah. absorb, 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 absorb. So where, where are you now? Um, I own my own company, Upward Training. Okay. A little plug. If you guys don't know, it's UpwardTraining-com. <laughs> um, so I, I kind of, working for a lot of big companies and yeah. getting a lot of information was great, but I was like, kind of I, I left and I was like I think I can do it. I want to be able to, to take all the training and do it the way I want to do it mm -hmm. so whether that's open enrollment classes or working with big companies small companies municipalities I, I want to be able to influence the way that I want to do it and if I don't if I fail and fall flat on my face you know my overhead was about four thousand dollars for insurance for the year yeah and I'll just go work for another big company yeah um and I've been able to develop relationships not only for my own company, but also working with companies like Arbor Master and Noble Oaks and yeah, Jersey Crane. Yeah. And it's a great to have those partnerships and hopefully Academy Train. <laughs> um, but it's great to have those partnerships, right? Because yeah. as trainers, we're always learning from each other. So whenever yeah. I go and co-train with someone, I'm learning from the style that how they present, but also the information. And we're always just bouncing off each other. So I still want to cultivate those relationships and Good. do that. So if somebody, somebody wants you know, to utilize your company and I mean, how do they get a hold of you, the website, they call you, what, what things would you do for a company if they, Hey, I need some help on safety. I need some help on training. How would you go about to help them? So I think it's a conversation and it's unique to each company, right? So uh, I think smaller companies are really just trying to number one, fulfill their obligation to the, the ANSI and OSHA standards, right? Um, and I think a lot of people don't really know what kind of training they want. They're like, it sounds great. Like we need training, but I don't really even know what kind of training we need. Yeah. So. Where do I begin? Yeah. What do I start with? So I think it's just having the conversation with the owner and figure out what they're using for mechanisms. Or are you guys climbing on a closed system? Are you climbing on an open system? MRS, SRS, like where are you guys at right now? And where do you see yourself going? And what kind of work are you guys trying to do? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's coming into a company and saying, I'm just going to kind of almost do an audit and just go on, on the job with your guys and see where inefficiencies are and try to and try to kind of start planting seeds and tweak some things to increase efficiency to make you guys more productive mm -hmm. and also safer and sometimes it's i'm coming in i'm shutting down production for two days and we're like all right listen we're gonna go over technical precision tree felling today and tomorrow's gonna be area to rescue let's go um so it really depends what's the reaction you get after you teach one of those classes honestly and the feedback yeah so for me, my, as we said kind of earlier, people remember the first and last thing you said, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. And me. I, my style of training is I'm going to bring the energy. No matter. You got some energy. <laughs> you got some energy. I felt it. I needed that. I needed a little boost this morning. No matter what I'm training on, no matter how boring it is, even if it's chance on maintenance, I'm going to make you laugh. Yeah. Because if you're laughing, I'm driving engagement, and I just switch something in your brain so that you're automatically paying more attention. Yeah. So you're going to have a good time in my training, no matter what we're, <laughs> no matter what we're talking about. <laughs> and that's honestly the feedback I get. And I think some of the most impactful feedback that I get is that like, you know, people come up to me all the time, and they're like, man, I got all this shit going on at home. I'm having a hard time. I'm feeling really down. And I came to your class, and you inspired me. Like, I want to do better. I want to do this. I want more information. That's your reward right there. Yeah. What 100%. a great reward. 100%. That's, what, that's why we do what we do, yep, right? Yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. That's awesome. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I, we covered a lot of ground. We did. We did. I mean, I, I mean, I, I didn't even put the time. Usually I do the time. I'm like, okay, 10 to 15 minutes for these ones. But I was enjoying this conversation <laughs> so much. And, and I know you guys, you've, you're, there's a lot more to the story. Okay. Oh, yeah. There's a lot more and there's some other things we will we'll get more in depth in when you come out to California and uh, on the record. And though. especially if we have proper drink, it um, <laughs> it definitely helps with all the flow and that and the laugh. So uh, I'm going to be excited for you to come out Heck to California. Yeah. Uh, look her up. Follow We're her. training, y'all. Yeah. Hire her. Jeans on Meg. If you guys need some help with, you know, safety, with training. Uh, with processes, how do you get started? 
call you. Yeah. Right. Please get do. you on a get you, get her on a phone call and chat with her on that uh, for that. Uh, uh, it was a pleasure talking to you today. You as well. uh, meeting you face to face. You know, we talked on the phone and through text and stuff like that. But we're gonna hang out. And we're gonna have some uh, good time and uh, hopefully have uh, some working relationship here. Yeah. You know, soon for that. So. Everybody, listen, if you like this, you got something out of it today. Like I said, the fee of the show is to share it. Uh, if you didn't like it and this was the most boring thing you ever heard, don't share it. Yeah. Yeah, we don't care. But anyways, I enjoyed it. I really <laughs> did. There were some good things. I like the, the, the everybody's going to remember how you start and finish. And they're, all, the, boy, they're really going to, I'm going to get this right, is how you, you made them feel. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. and, and that, I took that and I'm going to remember that. So Use thank it. thank you. Thank you for giving me that. But uh, to everybody listening today, man, hey, continue to elevate that standard through safety, through training, through innovation. Have a great day. See you soon. Bye.